Hello, everyone. This is our third lesson on differential equations, and I'd like to take a look at AP free response dealing with this uh, topic of the natural log of x. So what I'd like you to do is copy the six problems I have here. Some of them are straightforward, but some of them require you substitution, and our goal is to discuss a shortcut. Let's do the first three. Okay, pause the video and try the first three. All right. Well, the answer to the first integral is the natural log, the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So please remember that when the denominator has an, an exponent of 1 and the numerator is just by itself, the integral is the natural log of an expression, the absolute value of that expression. Now, the next two require u substitution, and they're both natural logs. But let's do the first, the third one. Here, the inner function is 2x plus 3. When we differentiate, we get 2. So we cross multiply. Bring the 2 and make this a half du equals dx. So this integral would be 1 half the natural log of u, absolute value of u, which is the absolute value of 2x plus 3 plus c. So note that we can find the antiderivative of an expression that, le that yields the natural log of the absolute value of that expression. So it's always in the form of du over u. But again, when the u is linear, the answer has a coefficient of the reciprocal of x. So don't forget that. And we don't need to go through the u substitution. If u is not linear, we have to go through the u substitution. OK, so looking at these other problems, the answer to this second problem, well, the coefficient of x is 1, so its reciprocal is 1. And this is just the natural log of x plus 3 plus c. So let's just put a box around these. How I highlight our answers. Okay. Now, in the next one, it deals with the natural log of the absolute value of 3 minus 2x plus c, but the coefficient of the negative 2, because that is the coefficient of x, is negative 1 half. So don't forget this negative 1 half there. In the next one, number 5, notice that u is 3 minus 2x. So the reciprocal of the coefficient of negative 2 is again negative a half. However, this integral is not the natural log. It is in the form of u to the... I'm sorry. Need, need to erase that, u to the negative 4 du. So the integral of that would be u, which I'll put back down here, to the negative 3 over negative 3 plus c. So it's 3 minus 2x to the negative 3 over negative 3 plus c. So please don't think that just because the denominator if the fraction has a denominator, that the integral is the natural log. Look at the exponent. The exponent of the entire denominator is 1. Okay. Whereas in the next one, that is a natural log. So don't forget to factor out the 10. The coefficient is the reciprocal of the negative 5. That's negative one-fifth. And the answer is the natural log of the absolute value of 7 minus 5x plus c. So in general, the answer is negative 2 
the natural log of the absolute value of 7 minus 5x plus c. So this shortcut comes in very handy. I find that it's useful in most of the AP free response questions dealing with this. So let's take a look at an AP free response that you should have downloaded for your notes. This AP is from 2006, the last problem. And it says, consider the differential equation dy dx equals x squared times y minus 1. Now, the first one says, part A, that we have to sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the 12 points indicated. So what I would recommend doing, rather than doing this in your head, is to write down the coordinates of these points. Okay, so let's just make a little list here. So I've got negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. I have negative 1, 1, 0, 1, and uh, 1, 1. Then I have ne negative 1, 2, 0, 2, and 1, 2. And finally, I have negative 1, 3. Oh, I have to extend this. I'll do it over here. Negative 1, 3, 0, 3, and 1, 3. And we're going to substitute each of these points into this equation, which is x squared times y minus 1. Okay, so let's, let's take a minute and find the values at those points. So I completed the chart for you here, and notice that we have to be really careful. When x is 0, the product is automatically 0. When y is 0, then we have negative 1 times x squared. So here, notice that when x is negative 1, the negative 1 squared is 1 here. And the 0 minus 1 makes it negative 1. So check your values on against this table. And now we're going to draw the slope field. And I want to go over this with you again. First of all, it's easy to draw a slope of 0. And here, these are zeros. We have zeros at these points. And a tangent line with a slope of 0 is horizontal. So we have horizontal tangents along these points. And along these points. So we could get care of, we could take care of those. All right, now let's take a look at the slope of 1. We have two lines with a slope of 1, and it's here and here. So we go to negative 1, 1, negative 1, oh, I'm sorry, negative 1, 2, this point, and to draw a, a tangent segment with a slope of 1, we go up 1 and to the right 1. And we're going to connect this here. So this is my tangent segment with a slope of 1. But I have to erase the rest. OK. And similarly, for the point 1, 2, oh, the wrong, wrong thing. I have to go, I could go up one to the right one and then draw a tangent segment that way. So those take care of those two. Oh, and we did this one also. We did this one before, zero, zero. Oh, and there are, um, yes, okay, we did that. All right, now the ones we didn't cover are... 1, 0, which is a slope of negative 1, so I'll highlight that in green, and negative 1, 0, these two, 
which is a slope of negative 1. So let's do that. So with the slope of negative 1, we go up 1 and 1 to the left. So connecting this point to that point, we get this. And of course, I have to erase the rest. And you don't, have to, you don't have to show it this way, but I'm showing it to you so you understand how it's done. Okay. And similarly, the same is true at negative 1. Oops, wrong color. So at negative 1, we go up 1 to the left 1. So our slope looks like this, our tangent segment. All right, so the only two remaining are the ones with the slope of 2. And we've got two of them when y is 3. So with the slope of 2, because I don't have enough points here, I'm going to go, go down, down and to, and the, to the, I'm going to go, go down, down two and, two and to the right, to the, right, to the, left, to the left, one. left one. So if so we go, go down, down two, two to the to left, the left one, one, I have, I have this, this segment. segment. And for the other point, I will do the same. I will go down two, one, two, to the left one. So I'm here. So I draw a tangent segment this way. And that's our slope field. Let's just erase the rest. And of course, it's better if you do it with a straight edge. But I'm doing this with you so you know exactly what to do. And eventually, you'll be able to do this freehand. So we'll do that. Okay. So um, now in part B, they have, while the slope field in part A is drawn only at 12 points, it is defined at every point in the xy plane. Describe all points in the xy plane at which the slopes are positive. So we're looking at this idea. Now when the slope is positive, the line goes to the right. When the slope is negative, the line goes to the left. The tangent line goes to the left. So here we see that we've got positive slopes here. So we could say that the slopes are positive at the points x, y, where y is greater than 1 and x is not equal to 0. Because if x equals 0, we have a horizontal tangent. So we have to put that restriction. OK, now let's take a look at part c. Now part c is where we have to solve the differential equation. Notice the same phrase, find the particular solution to the differential equation. And we have to write it in terms of y equals f of x. So let's, let's try it. OK, now this is where the natural log will come in. OK, let's rewrite our differential equation. We're going to cross multiply. So if I put this over 1, I get 1 dy equals x squared times y minus 1 dy. Now we have to check, are the y's with, oh, I'm sorry, this should be a dx. I keep writing the wrong thing, so let me just erase that. Okay, so that's a dx. Now, we have to make sure that all the expressions with y are on the dy side and all expressions with x are on the dx side. So we see that on the right side, we've got this y minus 1. So we're going to divide each side by y minus 1. So let's do that. So if we divide, and I'll do it directly. I'm not going to make another line out of it. We'll divide each side by y minus 1. And we get dy over y minus 1 is equal to x squared dx. And remember, never divide by dx and never divide by dy. Just divide by the expressions in the parentheses. All right, now we're ready to integrate each side. 
And this is what they've been doing on the AP. One side would require U substitution and the other side would not. So if we look at the left side, well, of course, the plus C goes here. We, we discussed that. And the integral of this, looking at the D, at the do now, is simply ln of the absolute value of y minus 1. And the coefficient of y is 1, so the reciprocal of that is 1. And the antiderivative of x squared by the power rule is x cubed over 3. That's the hardest part of the problem. Now the rest is all algebra, but some part of the algebra is a little bit different. So let's continu continue on the next page. We're going to find C by substituting the initial condition 0, 3. All right. All right. So I rewrote the solution we we obtained on the previous page, and the initial condition that they told us was f of 0 is 3. And this means that when x is 0, y is 3. And be really careful which ones you substitute. So we put the 3 in for the y, and we get ln of absolute 3 minus y, and a 0 for the x. So when we proceed to solve this, we get ln of 2 equals c. And now we substitute back into the antiderivative we obtained. This is done in every question I've done with you so far. So one-third x cubed plus, plus the natural log of 2. All right. Now, this is where the algebra differs. We have to isolate the y. And we've got two problems. One is being subtracted from it. We've got an absolute value around the expression, and we've got an ln. So we're going to work from the outer to the inside. So to clear ln, the only function that would clear ln is to take a base e on each side. Now, this is very strange, but we can do that. e is e to the x is 1 to 1, so we could introduce it on both sides of the equation. And this ln of the absolute value of y minus 1 becomes an exponent for the e, and so does the 1 third x cubed plus ln 2. These are exponents. Okay, now the reason why we did that is because e and ln cancel, so I've isolated the absolute value part, but this I will leave. And notice that using the rules of exponents, I could rewrite the right side as e to the one-third times x cubed times e to the ln of 2. And remember, when we multiply two expressions with the same base, we add the exponents. So if there's an ln, an ln of an expression in your exponent for e, always split it up. Because see, watch what happens on the next line. Because e and ln are again together here, I could just say that that's 2. So it's 2 times e to the 1 third of x cubed. Okay, now that looks a little easier. Now let's work with the absolute value. Now recall back several years ago, when you solved an equation with the absolute value of x equals 2, you always said x was positive or negative 2. So to clear the absolute value sign, we introduce a positive or negative, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to say y minus 1 equals positive or negative 2e to the x cubed over 3. All right. Now, to solve for y, we add 1, and we put that in the front. And this is another instance where we have two curves. We have y equals 1 plus 2e to the x cubed over 3, or y equals 1 minus 2e to the x cubed over 3. And we have to pick the curve that satisfies the initial condition when x equals 0, y equals 3. And if we're not sure about that, we could just substitute these and see which one gives us that solution. So if I substitute it in this one, 
I get 3 equals 1 plus 2e to the 0. 3 equals 1 plus 2, well, e to the 0 is 1. 3 equals 3. So it's this curve. It can't be the other curve, but we could check it. If we put 3 equals 1 minus 2e to the 0 cubed over 3, we get 3 equals 1 minus 2 times 1. 3 does not equal negative 1, so it cannot be the second curve. That would have been the curve if our initial condition was 0, negative 1. So that completes that particular AP question. So notice that if we have ln of the absolute value of a number, the technique is to take a base of e on each side, clear the absolute value by putting a positive or negative in the front, and then isolating y and taking a look, taking a look at the two curves separately. Let's try another one that does the same that does the same thing. The oh, where am I? Okay, so this is our next AP question, which was given in 2014, again the sixth question. And it required the same idea, but there was a little trick behind it. Let's take a look at it. Um, we have a differential equation dy dx, dy dx equals uh, 3 minus y times cosine x. And it says let y equal f of x be a particular solution to this equation with the initial condition f of 0 equals 1. The function is defined for all real numbers. Now, here they give us a slope field. And they said that this is a slope field for the differential equation and sketch the solution curve through the point 0, 1. Now, there's no math here. It's just following the little tangent segments. So the first thing we do is we just locate 0, 1. I mean, that's important. And we just follow the tip marks as they go. Now, um, so if I follow these tick marks, oops, oops, sorry. I have the wrong thing here, a pen. Okay, I should have a pen here. I hope it's working. So we follow the tick marks here. And it looks like that it flattens here and then goes around. Okay, this pointer has to be erased. And then we just follow the tick marks going down. And it seems like it's going to loop back up. So what we're really grading is the general shape of the curve. The, the grading here is not how precise you are in following the tick marks. It's, oh, I don't know how to get rid of this. Okay, it's whether or not we could locate the shape of the curve. Okay, so please ignore that arrow there. I don't know how to remove it, but that's the shape of the curve. All right, now. The next problem said, find the, oh, I'm sorry, skip to part B. Write an equation for the line tangent to the solution curve in part A at 0, 1. Use the equation to approximate f of point 2. We've seen this before. So to get the equation of the tangent line, we need the derivative at x equals 0 and y equals 1. So we simply substitute that into the differential equation which is 3 minus the y-coordinate times cosine of 0. And remember I said that there will be some way where they will test the trig values at special angles? Well, this is an example. So this would be 2 times 1, which is 2. So the equation of the tangent line in point-slope form would be y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 0. If we add 1 on each side, we get this. So to approximate the curve at f of point 2, we substitute point 2 here for x, and we get 0.4 plus 1, which is 1.4. So f of point 2 is about equal to 1.4. And Again, I, they do not take off for this, whether you put approximately or equals, but 
that's our approximation. Notice that point 2 is very close to the point of tangency, which is x equals 0. That's why we were able to use the tangent line. Okay, now the next part is the part that I really wanted to do, and that is find y equals f of x, the particular solution to the differential equation if f of 0 is 1. So, we'll start. We write our differential equation. Cross multiply, put this over 1, cross multiply, so I get um, dy equals 3 minus y cos x dx. We want to get the y's on one side, so we divide each side by 3 minus y. So we end up with 2, oh, excuse me, I lost, dy over 3, oh, I'm sorry, dy over 3 minus y equals cosine x dx. All right, now we're going to integrate each side. And the and again, the plus c goes on the x side. The integral of cosine x is just sine x. And this requires u sub. It's an ln integral. And because notice the exponent in the denominator is 3 minus y to the first. So this is ln of 3 minus, absolute 3 minus y. Don't forget the absolute value. Otherwise, we'll lose a point. And the coefficient of the y is 1. I'm sorry, not 1, negative 1. And the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So the answer is negative 1 ln of the absolute value of 3 minus y equals sine x plus c. Now we substitute the point to get c. So if f of 0 is 1, x equals 0, y equals 1. Be really careful with your substitution here. So negative 1 times the natural log of three, absolute value of 3 minus 1 equals sine 0 plus c. Now sine of 0 is 0, and I have negative ln of 2. Okay, so it looks like c is negative ln of 2. So we substitute this back into our antiderivative, okay? So we always go back to the original answer, and we substitute this back in for c. And now, again, the algebra is different in solving for this y, because now we have several barriers. We have to get rid of this negative 1. We have to get rid of the ln the absolute value, and then the 3, and the negative in front of the y. I, there's, there's so many. So let's take it from the outside in. If we multiply everything by negative 1, we get ln of the absolute value of 3 minus y equals ln of 2 minus sine x, right? Because we negate the sine x, and we negate the negative ln of 2, and we get ln of 2. Then to get rid of the ln, we take a base e on each side. And these become exponents. OK, now the e and ln cancel. So we have the absolute value of 3 minus y. And on this side, because there's a natural log in this exponent with a base of e, we're going to split this up into the product of two expressions with e, e times e. And that would be e to the natural log of 2 times e to the negative sine x. Or you could write the, um, e to the natural log of 2 divided by e to the sine x because we subtract the exponents when we divide expressions with the same base, but here I'll stick to multiplication. All right, now this is just 2 for the same reason that e and ln cancel.
And now we remove the absolute value by introducing a positive or negative on the other side. Okay, now this is where it gets really tricky. We subtract 3 on each side. And then we multiply both sides by negative 1. But when we multiply the negative 3 by negative 1, we get 3. If we multiply the positive place, if we multiply the positive 2e to the negative sine x, that becomes negative 2e to the negative sine x. And if we multiply the negative times a negative 1, it becomes positive. So that part remains positive or negative. The, three, the negative 3 is negated. So we have two curves to consider. Now we have two curves to consider. y equals 3 plus 2e to the negative sine x, or y equals 3 plus 2, oh, excuse me, minus 2e. to the negative sine x. And we have to pick the curve that, connect, that contains the initial condition, x equals 0, y equals 1. And again, the best way to do this is to substitute and see which one works. So if we substitute on the left side, we get 1 equals 3 plus 2e to the negative sine of 0. Well, the sine of 0 is, one, is 0. And when we negate 0, we get 0 anyway. We should realize that e to the 0 is 1, so 1 does not equal 5. So it's not this first curve. Hopefully it's the next one. Let's try it. 1 equals 3 minus 2e to the negative sine 0. We get 1. Is that equal to 3 minus 2e to the 0? Well, that's 1 equals 3 minus 2 times 1, and that checks. So the correct answer is y equals 3 minus 2e to the negative sine x. So that year, no one expected that the, the equation with the negative would work, but it did in this that year, so that was very tricky. And the point distribution was two points for drawing the curve, two points for the tangent line equation and the approximation. That was worth two points. And this last piece was worth three, uh, I'm sorry, six points. One point to separate the variables, two points for the correct integration, one point to see the plus C. And if the plus C was missing, we automatically lose three points. One point to use the initial condition and one point to solve for the y. Okay, let's take a look at one more problem that has the same idea, and this is called the skydiver problem. So let's move on to the next page. Okay. So this problem was given in 1997, and um, it talks about a skydiver. Let v of t be the velocity in feet per second of a skydiver at time t seconds. After her parachute opens, her velocity satisfies this differential equation, dv dt, equals negative 2v minus 32, with the initial condition of v of 0 equals negative 50. Okay, and now it says use separation of variables to find an expression for v in terms of t, where t is measured in seconds. So we go right into the solving the differential equation. So let's take a look at that. So we'll start with, um, oh, oh, let's get the black ink in going here. Okay, so we start with dv dt. equals negative 2v minus 32. And to make the algebra easier, and it's only because I've done this in so many different ways, from my experience, if you have a differential equation like that, try to factor out a number in the expression before you start separating the variables. So, and, and believe me, 
the integration comes out so much nicer. So if we factor out a negative 2, we'll get v plus 16. All right, now let's cross multiply. If we put this over 1, we get dv dt equals... Oh, I'm sorry. We get... Put this over 1. We get dv times 1 equals negative 2 times v plus 16 dt. Now, the negative 2, I'll leave alone where it falls. It fell with the dt, we'll leave it with the dt. What we're going to do is we're going to divide each side by v plus 16. So we get dv over v plus 16 equals negative 2 dt. Now we take the integral of each side. And remember, we add the c on the x or t side. And this is an ln integral, which, and notice the coefficient here is 1. So it's ln of the absolute value of v plus 16. On this side, we get negative 2t plus c. Now we put our initial condition to find our constant. So if v of 0 is negative 50, our t is 0, and our v is negative 50. So we have ln of the absolute value of negative 48 here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The absolute value of negative 34 equals c. And this is where the absolute value comes in handy because the natural log is not defined for negative numbers. So our function so far is ln of the absolute value of v plus 16 equals negative 2t plus the natural log of 34. So, so far, we have ha we solved it halfway. We're done with the calculus. Now we go into pre-calc to isolate the v. So let's move on to the next page. All right, so to isolate v, we take base e. First, the coefficient of ln should be 1 before we take a base e. And it we can OK, so these two cancel, and we get this. And again, because there's an ln in the exponent for e, we're going to split this up into e to the negative 2t times e to the ln of 34. So this side becomes 34 because the e and ln here cancel, just like they did here, times e to the negative 2t is equal to the absolute value of v plus 16. Now, we clear the absolute value by introducing a positive or negative on the other side, and we subtract 16. So now we have two equations to consider, negative 16 plus 34e to the negative 2t, or v equals negative 16 minus 34e to the negative 2t. So we substitute our initial condition, which was uh, v of 0 equals 
I believe, negative 34. In the last question, they ask, well, they do say this. It is safe to land when her speed is 20 feet per second. At what time does she reach this speed? Okay, so we know that our velocity function is negative 34 e to the negative 2 t minus 16. And we want to find out the time when it's safe to land. Well, it's safe to land when her speed is 20 feet per second. But because she's going down, we have to make this equal to negative 20. And if this was in a calculator section, which it was, we would solve this on our calculator. And the answer here comes out to be that the time is approximately 1.070 seconds. Okay, now another solution that they ex accepted that year is that students started to solve it by hand, which I will do not recommend if you have a calculator. If we add 16 to each side, We get negative 4 equals negative 34 e to the negative 2t. Okay, then if we divide each side by negative 34, we get e to the negative 2t equals uh, 2 seventeenths. Then to get rid of the e and solve for t, we take an ln on each side. And we get ln of 2 seventeenths is equal to, now these drop out, e to the negative 2t. So t, so t is equal to negative a half ln of 2 seventeenths seconds. This would be the exact answer. But it's so much easier to just solve it on your calculator. Okay, that takes care of the APs for today. I wish you the best and we'll continue tomorrow.